All right, welcome to another video. I'm glad to see you're back. I'm glad to see you uh, uh, back in my truck. I'm glad to see you uh, going with me on a, another service call. Hold on, I drop something right quick. Let me pick that up. Sorry about that, but uh, but we're going to a service call now. Sorry, I've got my sunglasses on. It's um, it's kind of bright. I kind of parked over here in the shade, so. So it's not completely in my eyes, but it's, it's been blaring in my face all day. But anyway, we're going to another service call. When you know it's North Carolina, it's summertime, so what do you think? You think it's a no-heat call? I think we're working on a gas furnace or an oil furnace or something like that. No, it's the typical no-AC call. Um, I don't know anything about it. Um, what I was told was just basically they don't have any AC and so if you've been watching me you know basically what I'm gonna kind of try to save a little bit of the steps on this one trying to tell you what I do in my process and um, trying to make this video as little kind of as compressed as possible so to get more and I'm sitting here saying I'm trying to keep it uh, compressed but I'm sitting here running my gums but what I'm going to try to do is tell you what I do, uh, not film every single thing, not the first part of it, and bring you back as we're actually diagnosing it. So as you guys watch the channel, you know, first thing I do on every service call, I go in there and ask the customer what's going on with the system. What is it doing? And they'll tell you the symptoms they're having. And um, basically, and what I always ask them first is, is it blowing air out of the vents? Uh, have you seen the outside unit running? Um, basically, that'll cut that service call down really quick. Because by just them telling you, you can kind of narrow it down and take some things out of it. So when I get to this service call, I'm going to go in and I'm going to ask those customers those things. After the, uh, but always you take the customer what they say at a grain, you know, with a grain of salt. Um, they could tell you one thing, it can be something else. So um, I, I, after I talk to them, I'll first go to the thermostat. I go and now, basically everything now is digital. I always check my thermostat first, see if I, my display is on. If my display is not on, that usually means either the battery is bad in the thermostat or you're not getting power to the thermostat. That tells me first I need to go down to the furnace. Um, if I got a display, I turn the air conditioner on and I turn it usually down to about 65 degrees because what I want to do, I want that air conditioner to keep running while I'm working on it. Um, basically from that point, I'll wait for everything to kick on. When I hear it click, I'll go to my vents in the floor or in the ceiling, wherever it is, I'll see if it's blowing air out of the vents. Um, and then basically we know that the furnace is getting power, the thermostat is getting power, so we got all that knocked out of the way first. And then basically I'm going to go to the condensing unit. So let me go see uh, what's going on. And if this thermostat is on, if it's blowing air out of the vents, I will check back with you at the condensing unit. See you there. Okay, I'm back. Um, I just talked to the customer. I want to give you guys a heads up of what's going on. Um, I went in there and I, uh, this is the unit. Maybe you can see it. This is a package unit. I don't think I've worked on a package unit with you guys yet. But anyway, um, first thing I did is ask them, you know, what's going on with the system. What they told me was the system wasn't keeping up. They said they have it set at 70 or 72. They say normally the system will keep keep up or keep it, the house down at 70, 72. Uh, luckily, uh, in North Carolina, you know, we were on a streak here. We were having like 95, 100 degree days. You know, that always put a strain on the system. But uh, today, it's, it's probably about 85 outside. So there's no reason in the world that this uh, that this air conditioner shouldn't be able to keep their downstairs, um, you know, around 72 degrees. When I walked in there and looked at the thermostat, the thermostat was reading 76. And it was, it was running. Uh, so basically, something in this thermostat, not thermostat, but this unit is causing it not to cool as well. They also told me that um, that when they would also, because they, you know, a lot of homeowners, they do the same thing that you do. They'll go to their vents and they'll feel the air coming out of the vents. And they said the air coming out of the vents didn't feel as cold as it normally does. Um, 
So that's basically what the problem is and what the customer is telling me. Uh, if you're a heating and air professional, you probably already know what's wrong with this thing. I probably already know what this thing is, what's wrong with it too. Um, I can already tell. Um, always listen, look. When I pulled up here, um, I saw that the unit was running. I heard the compressor running. I heard the outdoor, I saw the outdoor fan running. Uh, and I had air coming out of my vents. So just by walking out here and going back in here and talking to you guys, we know that this system pretty much all the parts are working. So um, if you do not, if you're new to the channel, when we verify that, what is the very first thing we do? Um, everything's working, no cooling, won't keep up. My very next step is I start checking my Freon charge. So I'm gonna get out of this air conditioned truck that I am. Brave this uh, hot weather for you, and well, I forgot you're coming along, so you've got to brave this heat with me. Um, let's go out there. Let's get our gauges and uh, and um, see what's going on. I'll see you after I get the gauges hooked up. All right, I don't want to forget a step. Uh, I left my truck running after I started talking to you guys. I wanted to come back to a cool truck. It's nice when it's not very very often that um that your truck is this close to your air conditioning usually it's you got a long trek so uh, i left my air conditioning going so when i come back in we'll have a cool truck to get back into but um yeah let me let me show you something now uh, this is why i'm taping this whole reason not just to run my mouth but uh we're on a gas pack a gas pack basically means you, you you're heating and your air conditioning is all in one unit. It's all in this. It's all in this one. It's packaged together in a sense. So basically, we have to uh, find where our our refrigerant uh, lines are in this. You've got all these panels, and then on these good ones, where the panel for your AC connections are is right here. So we will take this off. Huh? Got a little bug here. Let's give him another day save his life oh my gosh look at this let's turn this thing off did you see that all that ice so I think this is probably carrying me closer to know what's going on with this with this unit I told you what I probably pretty much thought it was and most of you um, heating air professionals probably knew what was going on is basically if you're air, you have air blowing everything's working and you have ice it means you either have a stopped up air filter or the system is a low in freon which I know it's not the blower motor bad because I felt air coming out of my vent so just by feeling the air we know our blower motor, blower motor is working we ain't got to go take the, that panel apart so what do we do now when we have all this ice and see if it's iced up there you know your evaporator coil is going to be completely iced up um so what i'm going to do just to save time on this video um i'm going to have to uh i'm going to have to take water like a water hose and i'm going to have to spray down this to to get all the um the ice off of these lines i'm going to have to open up my evaporator coil the place where my evaporator coil is i'm going to have to um completely thaw that out how I do that, I just basically take a water hose as a spray nozzle. I just spray the ice down until it's completely gone and, um, and get that ice off. So um, I'm, I want to save, save time on this because I know you guys got busy lives. I don't want to keep you here all day with me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start defrosting this. And as soon as I get it defrosted, um, I'm going to check back with you. And also, I'm going to check that filter. I'll let you know if that filter is stopped up. But, yeah, if you're a homeowner, you're looking at this for a DIY project, if you see ice on your system, first thing you want to do is check your filter and make sure your filter is not stopped up. Second, you want to check your vents. If it's too iced up, you may not have uh, uh, air blowing out of your vents because it can block that air. But, um, but the other, only other way you figure it out is go to your furnace or your air handler listen to it see if you hear the blower running see if you hear it blowing air you can usually hear it in your attic or your crawl space um 
but uh, I'm gonna get to doing that and uh, basically if you're a homeowner I'm not doing, let me cut myself off if you're a homeowner your blower is running your filter is good you have ice on your system 99% of the time you're low in Freon so if you don't have Freon you need to call somebody uh, you can call me I'll be glad to help you I'm here for you but anyway if you can't call me if I'm busy if I'm at the beach with my feet up um, maybe I can tell you how to fix it yourself so just remember ice blower motor filter Freon that's it so let me get this defrosted and as soon as I get it done I'll bring you back okay um, knowing that I want to try to keep this video short um, I'm gonna save you from um, checking the Freon and putting the Freon back in I just want to go ahead and let you know the system oil is low in Freon that, that evaporative oil is iced up like crazy it took me a long long time to get everything defrosted even with the water hose so and I know I told you guys I want to keep it quick so I'm gonna skip the uh, checking the Freon and, and charging the Freon because I already have videos on that so if you want to know and, and you're new to the channel check out my video on how to check Freon charge how to charge a unit but the system was low in Freon remember like I said especially well okay if you're a homeowner watching this and you see that that type of thing happening with your HVAC system like I said before blower filter Freon um, first off is uh, go check your filter make sure your filter is not dirty uh, second go to either your crawl space or your, or your attic wherever your furnace or air handler is um, and basically listen to see if you hear that blower um, a lot of times if it's iced up like this it may not be blowing air out of the vents even with the blower running because that um, that ice can block the air coming out of your vents so it may you know you may not think the blower is running but always go and check it um, if that's the case what is my suggestion to the homeowner who's watching this video uh, what do I do if I see that um, first is turn the unit off um, that's really all you can do because I mean someone who doesn't know what they're doing I don't, you know I don't want to suggest you to do something because uh, this is definitely not a DIY project turn your unit off go ahead and call your local heating and air conditioning person uh, have them come out um, while you're waiting for it to defrost get in touch with them maybe in that time that you're waiting for it um, they can come out and go ahead and take care of it um, the only other option you have is you can try to defrost it like I did um, take a water hose um, get all of the ice off the lines you've got to go to your evaporative cool either up in your attic is usually where the furnace is take your panel off of the uh, evaporative coil get all that ice off I wouldn't tell you to spray water in there I would definitely tell you to wait 24 hours because if you get what spray water in there and you get water on a circuit board or something like that you could have more problems than that but um, but the advice I have for a homeowner is 99% uh, of the time it's probably low in Freon call somebody because um, you can't buy Freon at Lowe's or Home Depot uh, you have to buy that from a special place and you have to have a license for it so you're gonna need somebody to charge it up for you and I would tell you I feel sorry for you because anytime you have a leak that's a very expensive repair, repair to, to have done so uh, I know I told you I was gonna keep this 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 video short I didn't show you as much but I kind of wanted to go into a little bit more in depth of um, what to look for um, what you should do um, and um, kind of inform you a little bit more on this than showing you because all the other stuff I've got on another video hey and I want you to go watch those videos so so check those out and uh, I think um, I really appreciate you guys riding with me today um, kept me company um, kind of made my day to have you with me but uh, so I need to shut up I told I said I was gonna make this video short so cut it um, thanks guys like and subscribe I really appreciate it I need you to subscribe and like and um, other than that I'll see you next time on the next service call thank you bye <laughs>